Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and today I'd like to talk about Doctor Who, once again touching base on that great topic of companions who never were in Doctor Who history. Background characters that really went over the top as far as being likable or, you know, having potential that you could see if they had been made actual companions to travel in time and space with the Doctor. And in this particular episode, I'm going to be talking about two modern series, uh, both with the same name, Jenny. Uh, of course, the first is Georgia Moffett's you know, the Doctor's daughter. Um, now, this was a situation where, of course, the Doctor was traveling at the time with Martha Jones as well as Donna Noble, and they kind of inadvertently end up on this planet where you have these two factions, uh, a human settlement as well as an alien settlement called the Hath, which I always kind of thought were pretty cool, and I wish we would have seen a little more of, uh, even though, you know, they couldn't really communicate. Um, you know, they're trying to basically figure out who has the rights to this world and everything like that. It's a little more complex than that, and I'm not going to get into it because I haven't seen the episode for a long time. But I always go back to, as far as what was memorable about that episode, was the very beginning of it where you have the Doctor, you know, once they arrive in the TARDIS, He's issued up into this machine where his hand is jammed into it, and all of a sudden, out pops Jenny. A genetically constructed, engineered, if you will, and very instantaneously, uh, you know, kind of like what the microwave was to people back in the 50s or whatever. You mean I can make a TV dinner? Wow. And that kind of thing. I can make a person. And, oh, wow, they're my kin. Um, it was really, really fascinating and awesome because, of course, the Doctor's immediately put off by this. This is David Tennant's 10th Doctor, of course. Um, and it's interesting that that's his future wife, who also happens to be the real-life daughter of Peter Davison. Uh, you pretty much, you know, if you're a Whovian, you can't go far without tossing a rock and hitting somebody who brings that to your attention. But I always did find it really cool and fascinating. The Tenth Doctor is really put off by her existence, and it's really about a learning curve of acceptance. You know, seeing that what fuels this young woman is the same kind of drive and determination and, and hopefulness that the Doctor tries to project. We know that he has deeper, darker sort of inner turmoil and stuff like that. But we do see a wide-eyed excitement at the potential for his daughter. By the end of that episode, he falls in love with her in, in a very familial way, you know. I mean, I really could have seen if you had a couple other companions replace Martha and Donna, uh, essentially, you know, sort of reinventing that very first uh, sort of, you know, foursome of the Doctor, his granddaughter in that case, in William Hartnell's era, with Susan, and two other companions. It could have been really, really cool, especially going into the 50th anniversary, to sort of reinvent that. Um, then there is, of course, the Jenny who is the sort of wife of Madame Vastra of current. Um, a lot of people can take or leave those characters, Madame Vastra, Jenny, and Strax. I enjoy them. I think they're really funny and cool. And the Jenny of that sort of trio is a very tough chick. You know, she has a sort of... Um, I guess you could say innocence about her, but she can really hold her own with action elements and stuff like that. And if the Doctor was ever in a sort of precarious position, she would be tough as nails and help get him out of it. Um, that's what I really love about that version of Jenny. And there are, you know, a handful of episodes I could point back to. The name of the Doctor specifically where, you know, we think she's killed at first. Broke my heart the way she sort of gasps at the realization that she's dying and everything like that. But also in uh, The Crimson Horror, she throws down. And so these are two Jennies that I would love to have seen at other times traveling with the Doctor in Doctor Who. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you think of either of these choices and uh, other suggestions you may have. Otherwise, I hope you're all doing well, and I'll catch you later. Peace.